podcasting from the deep depths of cyberspace. This is Darn IT Podcast, cybersecurity made simple, and I'm your host, Darnley G, CEO of Darn IT Group, episode 38. Why you don't need a firewall, and eight reasons why they won't protect you. Don't need a firewall. What? Am I crazy? Have I lost it? Probably not, but I digress. Welcome to this next episode of Darn IT Podcast. Now, we're going to talk about perimeter security. Uh, if this, if you're yawning and think this is boring, then please stop now and don't listen, because we're going to talk about something very dry, boring, and no one cares about perimeter security, right? Well, maybe not so much, but you know, I'll try to make it nice and easy for all of you listeners to digest and um, you know have a little fun with it as well. So I want to talk to start this podcast off about we all know our world is full of unknowns. Everything we do, there's always something that we are not aware of that's happening, right? The very same thing happens in cyberspace. There is a lot of unknown variables, the things that even us in the security industry, we can't account for everything. And this is the kicker. Businesses alike rely on technology to run and protect their business. But on the flip side to that, they may not know those unknowns. They arbitrarily think, okay, we've installed a top of a line perimeter security appliance and we're okay. I can tell you many, many stories of various businesses that have been breached, compromised, leaked, attacked, exploited, etc. from that sort of arrogant thinking in some ways. Now, let me tell you something before I get into this. Yes, perimeter security is important, 100% guaranteed. However, we need to sort of detach that perception that because you have a perimeter security appliance, it doesn't mean you're kind of, you know, clear out of the woods, right? It is like that shield you wield as a medieval knight marching through the digital hell, that shield will help protect you, but only a certain percentage. So use that sort of analogy, as you will, to think about how perimeter security can protect your business. Now, I'll tell a very quick, quick story. Uh, We were engaged in a, um, a company that wanted us to secure the network. They had a in-house IT personnel, but one of the things that we got, and I was present in that meeting as well, was they really, really were hung up on the expense, like the monetary value of the firewall appliance. It was, um, it was one of those Cisco top end Cisco firewalls. They're great appliances. Don't get me wrong, but I was very curious and I started to prod sort of the IT manager's sort of perception of, well, okay, why do you think this firewall appliance is so great? And and do you feel like it's doing a great job at doing what you think it's doing? Well, long story short, I kind of got a half-winded answer, but it really didn't actually present itself enough to, to so that I can be comfortable with that individual really understanding what a firewall appliance does. And the many times I said to him that a lot of the mission, mission critical applications are still uh, exploitable online, he thought that was a complete impossibility. So let's say we just left it at that. But this is sort of to preface this podcast, this is really a lot of the consensus with some IT professionals, as you will, 
when it comes to a firewall appliance. Because you, you have to look at it that, yes, a firewall is what it is. It's a perimeter security. Now, understanding that our sort of castle mindset as it was 10, 15, 20 years ago, where you can lock down, you can have the moat, you can have the drawbridge, you can have the archers waiting by the castle edge. You can have all these things 15, 20 years ago, and it would protect you to an extent, right? You you have the latest technology, the latest hardware, and sort of a, a in an enterprise mindset, uh, that would have been the case, and that worked for a little bit. But now the fact of the matter is, we have now moved into a cloud um, century, a cloud mindset where a lot of the applications are based online, or some of these applications are based on premise, but need to be accessed to the internet. Now, both have their complexities, but inherent risks when it comes to operating software on premise or in the cloud. The latest landscapes with this digital transfer t- transformation and cloud migration really exposes businesses and organizations' crown jewels to the outside world, making them available to anybody. So you want to think about, and I know some of you are a bit uncomfortable with the crown jewels. I apologize, but that's what we sort of do sort of say it in the, in the industry or, um, to get the point across and, it, or your, your crown, your crown diamonds, whatever makes you comfortable. Okay. It's, it's just really about the, the database, the information, the things that the bad guys want to access and take and steal from you. All right. Just understand that when we make anything available online, it, it, it's basically opening up a gateway, a portal, as you will, to the outside world. And it, it's just really opening up a can of worms that essentially could affect your business. Now, let's talk about eight different scenarios that could expose your business applications to the bad guys. Number one, and very important, number one, insider threats. Think about it. Your employees have access to mission critical apl- applications. They already have the authorization to make tasks. For example, a system administrators can be a threat. Now, this brings me to a, um, a report I read about a week or two ago from when this podcast would be released, or maybe three weeks. Um, was when the uh, a Tesla employee uh, down in the states said that they were approached by a, a Russian a state sponsored a Russian state sponsored uh, cyber criminal that was offering this person millions of dollars to plug in this USB key into one of the Tesla factories. Now think about it. They, the, the Russian state back attackers essentially gave this individual an opportunity to be an insider threat, right? And, and luckily that this employee actually informed the FBI and told them about the scheme and they were able to squash it before it became a problem. But just imagine the ramifications if this individual actually went through and this happens all over the world, you're having people being bribed to install, inject malicious code into an organization because they know this is the easiest way that they're going to be able to launch their payload to be able to attack or to steal information from a company. That brings me to point number two, compromise accounts and credentials. Again, think about this. Typically, users use a single sign-on to authenticate. If this gets compromised, the access to these mission-critical applications will be granted and cybercriminals will target users 
with extensive privileges like a CFO, a CEO, CIO, etc. with the intention to compromise. And and think about with the latest news, like go do a search it's it's this shouldn't be news to you and if it is i'm sorry to be the one to burst your bubble but some way shape or form our credentials our email addresses accounts were stolen by a company that we entrusted and is now leaked all over the deep or dark web so really no matter what we do our credentials will continue to be stolen and used and cyber criminals know that someone's going to slip up. A CFO, for example, may have lost his or her credentials somewhere and probably in some way uses the same password. They don't have proper cyber hygiene. So they look at that and say, well, we're going to collect this person's login information and do sort of a shotgun blast through all these accounts to see what sticks. And this is another way that if you have a single sign-on, to your network or through a critical business application and that individual is using the same password for numerous accounts, it's only a matter of time before something like this sticks and the cyber criminal will have access to that particular application, especially mission mission critical applications. Number three, compromised endpoints all over the organization users will connect to the business via their their endpoint. The high number of attacks against the systems, operating systems, or lack of defenses can help the cyber criminals compromise the accounts. Now, once the endpoint has been taken over, there is a direct connection to mission critical applications. So that means is if an endpoint is logged into mission critical applications, a database, whatever, once that particular endpoint is compromised, literally, it will take nothing for a cyber criminal to collect that information and steal it. This is why it's very important to have proper cyber hygiene, to have proper policies and procedures in place in your your organization, as well as has the latest and greatest uh, protection software, malware protection software, if that be a sort of a AI component to protecting these endpoints from compromise. Our Beagle EDR system works in the same way. What it does is endpoint detection and response. So our EDR system will essentially find the threats, shut it down, and restore whatever issues there were before it becomes a big issue. And that's very crucial for endpoints because people do make mistakes and it's good to have something in place to be there to reduce the amount of IT headaches that comes with something like this. Number four, phishing attacks. Very important. These are the most successful methods for cyber criminals to deliver their payload into a business and trick the end users to perform perform unaware activities. So, by downloading an email or downloading an attachment, sorry, would at least allow the criminals, either that be through a spoofed website to, to enter their credentials or to download something on their computer that would be a key logger or what have you that would be able to take that information. So criminals are looking at phishing and phishing has been the, the number one focus and the, one, the number one most successful attack a cyber attack against an organization because at some point or another, someone's going to screw up and they're going to get access to those accounts. Number five, integrations and multi-cloud environments. Now, your mission-critical applications are typically interconnected with other applications through different interfaces. The cyber criminals could leverage to move laterally or to target other systems to compromise the most critical applications. So we think that everything's now hyper-connected. All your apps are connected with each other for whatever reason. So understand that in a lateral movement, criminals will be able to access different parts of your system if 
if they were allowed allowed to actually access that um, particular multi-cloud environment. Number six, business partners and vendor access. Now, some organizations provide uh, VPNs or virtual private network access to partners, vendors, or external contractors. The, there's a constant requirement of availability of mission-critical applications. Now, for example, if, if a firewall router connected between the organization's information component and the internet, a, something as silly as a misconfiguration or an outdated firewall, this could be a golden opportunity for cyber criminals to abuse and to provide a connection to the apps itself. So really what they would do is be able to compromise these applications and do it as they will. Number seven, mobile-enabled applications. Now, most, no, most businesses' applications need to have and to support, a, a mobile, to support the mobile devices. This further expands the attack surface significantly. Not just the device that can be targeted, but the mobile applications installed there as well. When you think about how often and how much we use our mobile applications, our business services or connectivity, if you need to access emails, you need to access the database, etc. We are so hyper-connected that our mobile applications has significantly changed the attack surface that cyber criminals still love to exploit. And as far as I'm concerned, we are a bit behind in our mobile technology securities. Uh, and I'm not going to really sort of peel this back and pick on any particular vendor, but you know, they all need some work. Every single one of them needs some work to ensure privacy. Yes, there are some companies out there that specializes in specific uh, security applications, but I won't mention them over here. However, I am a BlackBerry fan through and through, and I respect some of the devices they made, especially the Android ones, that make security number one. And for those BlackBerry lovers or those closet BlackBerry lovers, uh, BlackBerry will be introducing new hardware uh, by next year. Irrelevant to this podcast, I apologize, but I just feel like kind of sliding that in there because I'm a fanboy. Judge me all you want. Point number eight, <laughs> internet facing applications. Many IT teams believe and they do believe that their mission critical applications are not exposed to the internet because it's behind a firewall. Yet IT teams are typically blinded on how these apps operated or how they are oper how they operate or how they are secured. Now, for those who are aware, uh, Shodan, it's a search engine that literally searches everything. And I've done this myself too. It's, it shows tens of thousands of business applications that are directly connected to the internet, which is increasing the attack surface. And this really shows you, using, using Shodan, shows you that the particular application, device, whatever it is, camera, um, whatever, it shows you that your device is not secure. So this, this would scare, if you ever did this, I don't recommend this for the average person because this will scare the living daylights out of them if they see all this nonsense, or the hodgepodge of data that comes to them. Uh, it, you should be concerned anyways. You should not be concerned after the fact. I say you should be concerned, but anyways, check it out. If you're a bit IT savvy or security savvy, check this out. It's, it's a great thing. So, okay, so eight points are done, but... What should you do? What should you do with all this information? Well, I understand that in today's world, mission critical applications are more exposed and connected to multiple networks and applications, if you like it or not. Even if they are behind a firewall, they are not fully protected because of the risk involving many other attack scenarios, which cyber criminals will start to compromise your business and look to access and steal your crown jewels. 
we need specialized technology that understands mission critical applications and provides the right level of visibility, um, detective and preventative um, controls to ensure that the most important information of your business is secure. And yes, you can hire a security operations center from Darn IT Group to gain that visibility to make that reporting. But really, in terms of the sort of a comprehensive aspect of it all, it doesn't really give you today the full visibility and control for mission critical applications that are connected to the internet. Thank you for listening to this Darn IT podcast with myself, Darn G. If you like our show and want to know some more, please like and subscribe. Remember, look both ways before crossing the information superhighway. Safe computing, everybody.